Hey everyone, welcome to another PrepWorks video. Today we're going to be talking about the properties of radicals and rational exponents. So we're just going to start with a couple of basic um, exponent properties that you may have learned in Algebra 1, and then we're going to apply them to what you need to know for Algebra 2. So we're going to start off here with just a couple. So we have x to the m power. These are just like given numbers. x could be um, just x is just a base and m is just a given exponent. x to the m over x to the n. Notice that both these exponents do have the same base of x, so those are equal. We're going to say that's equal to x to the m minus n. We'll have another one over here. x to the m power times x to the n power, or times the x to the m power to the n power is equal to x to the m times n power. And that's just what we're going to start with real quick. So one way we can prove this, let's say we set, um, let's say we set x is equal to four, m is equal to three, and n is equal to two. So up here we would have four times four times four over four times four. And then we can use the distributive property to rewrite this as four times four times four and four by four. And then we can see that these guys cancel out. So we're going to, let's rewrite this over here. We're gonna get four times four over four. And since when we multiply any number by one, it does not change the value. We're gonna just add this times one on both sides here. We're gonna get one, and if we use a distributive property again, we can get four times four times one. We're gonna get four times one. Again, these guys cancel out, and we get four by one over one, which is equal to four over one, which is equal to four. And if we take this original thing here, we say four to three minus two. Obviously, this is also equal to four to the um, one, which is, of course, equal to four. And we see these match up, so that's just a quick um, example about why this, this thing right here works. So I use up a lot of room there. Let's go over here. For this one, let's say we have same number. So four, so x is equal to four, m is equal to three, n is equal to two. So we have x to the three, which we just, which we um, would define as four times four times four, which is equal to 64, right? Because this is 16 times four, equal to 64. So we would have 64 to the power of 2. And we did that math real quick. We have 64 times 64, 16, 256. Then we'd have 4, put another 2 up here. We're going to end up with uh, 4,096. So when we put um, 64, oops, sorry about that. When we put 64 to the 2, sorry, to the 3 times 64 to the 2, we got 4,096. Now let's try this property. 3 times 2 is equal to 6. So let's try putting 4 to the 6th power. 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4 times 4. So here we would get 16. We get 64. Um, 64 times 2 would be 256. Two fifty six times 4. I can't do that in my head. I'll just put this here. <laughs> okay, 1,024. 1,024 times 4 is 4,096. So we got the same answer, proving this to be true. That's one more. Uh, let's do a couple more of these. So we have um, x to the m times x to the n is equal to the x m plus n. 
So let's, let's make this one a little bit easier so we can just speed through this. Let's say m is equal to 2, n is equal to 1, um, x is equal to 2. So you have 2 to the 2 times 2 to the 1 is equal to, so let's put a question mark because we're, we're just trying to prove this, um, 2 to the 3. So we know 2 to the 3 is equal to 8, which is 2 times 2 times 2. And then 2 would be 4 times 2. 4 times 2 is equal to 8. 8 is equal to 8. So this is all set. Let's just do a couple more. So we have that one. Oh, x, y to the n power is equal to xn times yn. So let's say x is equal to 2, y is equal to 3, and n is equal to 2 as well. So if we have 2 times 3 to the 2 power, and we're saying that this is equal to 2 to the 2 times 3 to the 2. So it'd be 6 to the 2 is equal to 36. This is equal to 4 times 9. 4 times 9 is 36. 36 is equal to 36. So everything matches up. This is correct. And let's just look at one more real quickly here. So x over y to the n is equal to x to the n over y to the n. So let's say, let's use the same numbers here, x equals 2, y equals 3, n equals 2. So let's say 2 to the 2 over 3 to the 2, which is 4 ninths, is equal to 2 to the 2 over, sorry, 2 to the 2 thirds to the 2. 2 thirds times 2 thirds is equal to 4 ninths, and this is also correct. So we do also have some other problems that I don't really want to prove quickly here because um, in, the, in the interest of time, but if we have x to the negative n, this is equal to 1 over x to the power of n. If x to the 1, this is equal to x, and if we have x to the 0, this is equal to 1. One interesting thing is that 0 to the x is equal to 0, except when 0 to the 0 is generally considered to be equal to 1, um, but it can also be undefined. Undefined. So now that we've established all of those, let's get into the meat of it. So now that we have um, the definition of a radical, so let's actually write that out real quick. So if we have a radical symbol, that's this guy right here. Uh, you should be familiar with that. Um, and let's say, I mean, you've, you've, we've all seen uh, multiple iterations of this, so this would be a cube, uh, square root if we had a 2 here, and just like say x was in here, be a cube root if this number was 3 up here. And so this number right here is what we call the index. Um, this is the radicand. And then this is just your radical symbol. So we're going to go over a couple of rules really quickly here. So when you have x to the p over r, let's say, I just give these different, um, get different letters. This is equivalent to r square root of x to the power of p. And this is important because if you have, um, and this right here is also called a rational exponent, by the way. If you have x to the power of any fraction that has like um, two, two integers here, this makes it really easy for you to simplify this into a radical. So another, another interesting thing is that if you have, say, x to the 1 half, we know that this is equal to the square root of x, right? And we can see that this is also true using this property right here because x is equal to, in this x to the 1 half, is equal to, in this case, the square root of x to the power of 1, which is also equal to the square root of x. And that's how I like to remember it. Um, a couple other things from simplifying, um, simplifying square roots, we also know that uh, any, or square root or any, any, any root, if we have two numbers a, b multiplied by each other, um, then this is also equal to this right here. Furthermore, just like um, our exponents, 
x a b here to the x the root of a over b is equal to the x root of a over the x root of b. And that's about all of the um, really important radical related laws that you need to know for algebra two. So we're just gonna look at a couple of quick practice problems here. So let's say we have, um, say we have two to the three halves power. So using this equation right here, we can rewrite this as two, let's say our p-value is three, right here, okay? So this is equal to just the simple square root of eight, um, which isn't a rational number, so this is how, this is the simplest form that we can put this in. But if we had something like three, power of three halves, then we could get um, three would be our x value, also our p value, as we see here. So we're going to put our p value is going to go right here, two here. So three to the third would be 27. And just square root of 27, which is also an irrational number. Um, yeah, so that's like the most basic way to to rewrite your exponents as a um, as a radical if if you have a rational exponent, which again is just basically any number raised to a fractional exponent up here. If you have any number like that, this is how you can transform it into an equation with a radical. Thanks for watching.